Hello, this is Math 10150 Lesson 3, and in this video we will be doing radical expressions and we'll be doing various operations with radical expressions. Now for the purposes of this course, we'll only be dealing with square roots as opposed to higher order roots, but we will be manipulating them such as adding or finding or rationalizing, adding, multiplying or rationalizing a denominator. So most often what we need radical expressions for, we need radical expressions to um, solve quadratic equations. So the radical expression, for example, for example, if we want to solve the quadratic, simple quadratic equation, x squared equals 2, then there are two solutions for this quadratic equation. They are namely the plus and minus of the radical of 2. And so when we write such an expression, this radical sign, of expression radical of a, then this the radical, this is the radical sign, the square root sign. This is the radical, and what's under the radical sign is the radicant. And evaluating square roots, we ask to undo the taking a square um, operation. So for example, if we wanted to evaluate um, the square root of 16, this is the principal square root, so we take the positive one. This is the square root of 4 squared, giving us 4. So in general, with perfect square roots, if we have the square root of a squared, the answer is just a. And we are assuming that whatever we are putting under the square root is positive. And one property to help us simplify other square roots, so one important property, one important property, a multiplicative property, or product property, so the multiplicative property of radicals looks like this. If we have a multiplication of numbers under the radical sign, we can split them up as radical A times radical B. So for example, Another example one, for example, if we want to simplify something like the square root of 300, which is not a perfect square, what we can do is we can use the multiplicative property and split it up as the square root of 100 times the square root of 3 square root of 100 is 10, so we simplify the square root of 300 as 10 times square root of 3. We call something under the radical simplified if there are no more factors that are perfect squares inside of the radical. So the simplified version of square root of 300 would be 10 times square root of 3. If we want to add or subtract radicals, we can only add or subtract like radicals. What this means is that we can only add or subtract radicals with the same radicand. So the radicand, the radicand must be the same. In order 
to add or subtract radical expressions. And of course, the index of the radical expression must be the same as well, but for this class, we're only going to do square roots. So for example, we can only add things that is a constant times radical of b plus another constant times radical of b. And what we're going to get is that this is now a plus c times radical b. That is how we add or subtract like radicals. So for example, 2, often we need to simplify first before adding. So we want to simplify the following. Simplify 5 times radical of 48 plus 2 times radical of 27. So as this expression stands, we cannot add it. We need to first simplify it. So we are going to use the multiplicative property to simplify first so that we are adding, in fact, to like radicals. So 48 is the product of 16 times 3. And 27 is the product of 9 times 3. So what we can do is we can rewrite this as 5 times radical 16 times radical 3 plus 2 times radical 9 times radical 3, giving us 5 times 4 times radical 3 plus 2 times 3 times radical 3. This is 20 times radical 3 plus 6 times radical 3. Now they are like radicals. And now we can add them. Now this becomes 26 times radical 3. common operation with radicals is to rationalize the denominator. Recall that when we want to rationalize the denominator, we want to re express the expression such that the denominator is no longer irrational, it does no longer have a square root in it. So if we want to rationalize the denominator, or we're asked to simplify an expression such as 12 radical 3 divided by radical 2, what it means is we need to write it in standard form, and when there are irrational numbers in the denominator, this is not standard form. So what we need to do is we're going to need to rationalize that denominator. So we're going to need to multiply this expression 12 times radical 3 divided by radical 2 by something that will make the denominator rational or not irrational. In this case I'm multiplying the numerator and denominator by radical 2. I'm not changing the expression because I'm effectively multiplying the numerator and denominator by 1. I'm multiplying the whole expression by 1. So in the numerator, I will get 12 times radical 3 times radical 2. In the denominator, I will get radical 2 times radical 2. I continue simplifying, and I will get 12 times radical 6. I just use the multiplicative property. And on the bottom here, I get radical 4. Radical 4 is just 2. So I have 12 times radical 6 
divided by 2. I can simplify this further as 12 divided by 2 is 6. And I finally get the answer 6 times radical 6. So in this case, this is my final answer. If I can't cancel things in the numerator denominator to remove the denominator, this is fine, as long as the denominator does not have any more radicals in it. In this case, there was only uh, one number in the denominator. In the next example, we're going to see when there is a con where there's two uh, binomial term in the denominator. So in the next example, we are asked to simplify or rationalize the denominator of the following expression of 4 divided by 1 plus radical 5. Here as a rule of thumb, we want to know, we want to multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. So the conjugate of an expression of something like a plus b is a minus b, where a and b are radical, a and or b are radical expressions. What this does, the conjugate is special um, because if you multiply a number by its conjugate, the terms, um, you multiply something like a plus b times a minus b, the cross terms cancel. And you're going to get a squared plus b a minus b a minus b squared. And you're going to get a difference of squares, a squared minus b squared. If a is a radical expression, then it times itself is just going to give you a rational number. And similarly with b. So that is why whenever we are faced with something like this, 4 divided by 1 plus radical 5, and we want to rationalize the denominator, we multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate. So the conjugate the conjugate of 1 plus radical 5 is 1 minus radical 5. So what we're going to do, we're going to take 4 divided by 1 plus radical 5, and we're going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. And so in the numerator, we're going to get 4 times 1 minus radical 5. The numerator can be as messy uh, as, as possible, it doesn't matter, but what we need to do is make sure the denominator does not have any radicals. And this is precisely what does it. One, we're going to foil this out. 1 times 1 is 1. Then we're going to have the cross terms, which cancel. And then we're going to have minus radical 5 times minus radical 5. So what we have is 4 times 1 minus radical 5 divided by 1 minus 5. So we have 4 times 1 minus radical 5 divided by negative 4. And I can cancel the 4 and minus 4, and I get 1 times uh, 1 minus radical. Five, and then I can distribute the minus, and I get radical 5 minus 1. I may have, in this case, my numerator ended up being 1, my denominator ended up being 1. It's perfectly okay for the denominator to be something else as well, as we'll see in the next example. But anytime you want to rationalize the denominator and there's a binomial, there's two terms 
in the denominator, you multiply the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. We'll see another such example in example 5. So we want to rationalize the denominator here, radical 3 divided by radical 2 minus radical 5. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take this expression and multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. The conjugate of the denominator is radical 2 plus radical 5. Okay. The numerator becomes radical 3 times radical 2 plus radical 5. The denominator becomes, I'll write it out explicitly, radical 2 times radical 2 minus radical 5 times radical 2 plus radical 5 times radical 2 minus radical 5 times radical 5. So in the numerator, we're going to get radical 6 plus radical 15. And in the denominator, we're going to get radical 4 minus radical 25. And so we have radical 6 plus radical 15 divided by 2 minus 5 or radical 6 plus radical 15 divided by negative 3. And this is the final 